Good evening for most of you, perhaps good morning, good afternoon. Time zones are hard, math is hard. I'm a music teacher, I count to four, but what's important is that we are here for the Friday Night Community Race with four absolute, uh, just some of our premier players here in the free enterprise community. It is tournament season, and uh, for those of you that aren't aware, we have two different uh, tournaments happening, the Red Moon and the Blue Moon. And tonight we're gonna get a clinic on how these Red Moon flags would work. Uh, my name is John Burkett, and I am joined tonight by Deathlike. Deathlike, how are you tonight? I'm good. Sweating a little, the weather being what it is. But uh, yeah, there's it's an ex excellent race. Uh, boss hunts are a, f a, f a favorite of mine because uh, I like killing bosses. That's that's all you're aiming for. And different, I mean, different between, and it's different from a lot of the uh, other races you've seen before, like uh, you know. Uh, object specifically object hunting for characters and whatnot so this is very different and with the edge start i'm excited yep uh this is a very different uh flag set from what we're used to in previous tournaments as you mentioned uh, it's all about the boss hunts which has caused a lot of strategy to be discussed and kind of reworked often people talk about the meta as to what good ideas are to do and i don't know that anyone has 100 percent cracked the code here however with these four runners you can absolutely guarantee that you're going to see some intelligent routing. You're going to see some smart decision making. You're going to see people that are really thinking ahead of time. And you can uh, guarantee just some wonderful gameplay. With this flag set, you can only start with Edge, Cecil, or Fu. But then you will only get one of those three main characters. Every other character that we find will be one of the other ones. And as you can see, we have an Edge start tonight. Yeah, I th I think uh, when when you kind of roll the <laughs> see you see rolled and you get the boss list, uh, always try to aim uh, kind of keep in mind uh, what you would kind of like to have towards the end, like and, and you kind of have a try to keep in mind like boss spots and how and ideally that boss at a particular spot. So you if say antlion, if it's at a high magic spot, that would be great because antlion not not uh not the most magical um, bosses on the table so you know if there's plenty of kind of think kind of thinking planning and seeing if what what you get less uh when you kind of kind of decide what it is and hey starting hook uh and these are all these seeds have are forced hook seeds so that'll be fun but uh, there'll be some grinding before we actually <laughs> immediately do the hook route Yep. Um, so the, uh, the Red Moon is is objectively the more difficult of the flag set between Red and Blue Moon. Uh, the bosses are not not randomized in this case. It is the same bosses every time. And uh, as you mentioned, depending on where they are, a lot of these bosses can be very rude. So we'll see what the randomizer does with where they put them. Edge can't start is nice. We are on T Pro. Um, uh, both these characters are very uh, reliant on their equipment, so that can be a bit of an issue. Uh, we have quite a bit of divergence. We have Rybon doing a boss check. We're off to Watery Pass with a couple of folks and Possum immediately diving into Evelyn. It's a it's an interesting decision. I am I'm of the mind to kind of get a few more characters early first. Uh, Solaris and Harump doing uh, the wa waterway, which has a decent loot set, so it's like it's fr it's free, and you get some higher some higher tier stuff early. So it. At least for me, if you're at least if you're starting with this flag set, you want to try this first. Get pick up pick up the extra character. You might not want them, but at least pick them up. You know, and and if you don't, that's you, you'll eat them later. That's not the problem. Uh, then, but the treasure here is what you want. I can, but Evelyn is still the place to go to place before you do the hook route, though. Yep. Uh, so with uh, the T Pro setting, it's uh, the, the big meta has been if you have Cecil, uh, especially with the Blue Moon and his T Wildish, go to Evelyn, try to find the Holy Sword in the traps. Uh, we know that we won't be having a Cecil in this flag set because we started with Edge, uh, so the looting is a little more tricky. I think you'll see more looting in this flag set than in Blue Moon. Possum immediately diving Evelyn did find a Cursed Ring, which is very handy. Uh, we know that we have a Sid over in Watery Pass, and Solaris uh, was able to go ahead and find a couple of J items. I believe we found both a Zeus Rage and a Big Bomb. Those J items can be wonderful at quickly getting through some of the early bosses, especially if they don't have the equipment for some of these characters, as we find a Yang at the very top of Damsey and Castle. 
Yeah, I think w- a l- with the f- with the uh, free character checks, uh, doing the looting at uh, Damsian is actually a pretty good idea. Given that you want some low tier items, you'll probably get the J I- the J items that do some damage, which is which will speed up the early stages and possibly bleed in a little bit to the- towards the end. But for you, really just want atta- uh, some j- uh, effective J items. In the case that you need them, you'll in, and then it's probably the best time to use them too. So, um, the uh, the we'll also see some boss checks, especially at you know a D mist or at and or at um, the waterway where you see where Octomem resides. So that's a, those are places you will want to check as early on. Uh, maybe not maybe defer a little bit, but you those checks will be on kind of on your mind. On, on these runners right while they are uh, trying to construct their team. Yep, uh, Rybon's been doing his boss checks early and he quickly found a DKC on Mount Hobbs. That is free and that is done. You spoke earlier about trying to find the bosses at uh, polite spots and that's a very polite spot to have DKC. Uh, Solaris has gone up ordeals to go ahead and find his free character who I missed because I'm trying to pay attention to four things at once, but I do know that Harumph has both a Rydia as well as a Tella. Every time you see Tella, you can't help but think about D-Machines if they find an early darkness crystal. And with that Rydia, that might be an early anchor and perhaps someone that gets slingshot to a quick nuke. Mages tend to have a bit more of an advantage uh, in this flag set because mages are not gear dependent. Uh, we'll see what happens. And Asuka, let me know that it is a Palom. So with the Tella and two Black Mages, uh, we might be seeing some dual nuke, especially if everyone finds the Curse Ring that Possum found in Evelyn Castle. I feel like you, you kind of you kind of do yourself the serve if you don't kind of loot Evelyn Castle before you even do the hook route. The lot, especially, especially with the uh, chest tiers, kind of um, we have while well, we have T T Pro, but we're not limiting we're not limiting the uh, loot that comes out of the inter. Like we're gonna, you're gonna get Excals and and see, uh, crystal swords, so you know you'll get something decent, uh, generally speaking, from looting uh, Evelyn Castle, regardless of who, whatever characters you, uh, whatever uh, group you put together. So it's it's one of those um, kind of you, you're kind of behind the hate ball if you if you don't consider looting that place. I mean, you may I mean with the early hook, you could probably. Not have to do that. Like you, you could probably try to loot uh, Cave Evelyn with the one, the one trap chest compared to the three in um, Cave in the Evelyn Castle. But I think the the better loot really comes from the castle and is probably kind of the go to loot at some point during your run. It's entirely possible. We are seeing a couple of different approaches here. Rybon has been pretty aggressively checking his bosses and his spots, going down to Antlion uh, and and uh, doing waterfall mischecks right away. We are not on Sineki, so that edge is well equipped. The short swords aren't great, but the bandana and the uh, black belt that he has are. Uh, Harumph has found not one, not two, but three, three poison axes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So he's probably feeling very comfortable getting through uh, some of his early checks uh, with the equipment that he has uh, between Kane and Sid both being able to use them. But here you see Solaris at a very minimum uh, going through the hook route already, possibly to take a peek to see who's at the, the King Queen spot or at the Ruby spot, excuse me. If that's free, then they can go ahead and uh, perhaps proceed through if they feel like they can take on the King Queen spot. They have Tella with exit, which means they can go ahead and take a peek and they don't have to walk it all the way out. So we are seeing some divergence regarding how much to loot and how aggressively to pursue the bosses. It all becomes a ma- Ooh, we see a vanilla ruby. That is less than ideal. You're going to want to see uh, an ice claw or maybe an ice brand or blizzard spear for that. That uh, That is not a good time. Um, but it becomes a matter of, do you get the time back? When I heavily loot, does that mean I'm going to get to my bosses that much faster? And as these amazing runners are fli- figuring out that flag set, we'll see how many of them are rewarded for their tactics. Looting kind of tends to favor berserkers in a, in such a way you'll get essentially get kind of the uh, even if the items are not what you desired you'll get the kind of uh, money you'll get from selling. We're not like in in this flag set, we're um we're you're not being penalized for selling things. So every so everything still ha- so when you sell everything is at half price and 
value of loot. So even if you say you don't get a sea soul, but you get a crystal sword, there's still value in, and you'll and you'll convert it into usable equipment for for some other berserker in your party. Uh, there, it could be there's um, some decent. Um, so it does it. it I th although in this flag set, uh, we you were um, kind of limited to some berserkers because the back the backward glitch has been fixed so in so you can't so try and you can only stuff so many berserkers in your party so and what tends to happen tends to at least happen is it kind of favors hybrid or like mage heavy strats so it, it there's it um having all at least you have the money to do what you need to do like you for all kinds of strats including uh 1200 uh, 1200 HP strats, which we'll probably uh, go talk about if that happens uh, later this game. So, uh, something of note, uh, Possum has not picked up a single free character. I think he looked at a fully uh, outfitted edge and said, uh, you know what, I can do my checks and I will route them in along the way. Um, he did do a clear of Eblin, and then I guess he'll pick up whoever he picks up. Another thing worth noting, as we see a required antlion of Fabul, which uh, all of our runners will most certainly find uh, sooner rather than later. Another thing worth noting, we don't have a traditional white mage in our seven character set. Um, the closest that we would have is either Iridia that might learn Ashura, or Tella. So while we are very melee heavy, and we do have a couple of black mages between Ridia and Palum, um, Tella sort of counts as white mage. Um, but that might be a little bit of an issue for our runners. Um, maybe not with these four, but for us common folk that run these seeds, uh, the healing might be a bit of an issue. You, you when you when you're kind of when you're like uh, kind of white like white magic deficient, uh, you kind of, you want to kind of go for berserker type of team. You you just want you just you don't want to rely on items to to you don't want to um, run strictly on items, you want uh, a lot more flexibility. But since you kind of in this flex that you you basically pick up your five characters, at, uh, however you however uh, you will, and the kind of tells you what you what you, what you, what you have, and you're not, and that's it. There's no there are there there are, there's no backup. You are you're dealt the hand you got. So you got to kind of make do what you got, and probably having tell us is a solid choice. Uh, early on, uh, but right, yeah, having Ridia as the emergency uh, white mage, I think Sylph will. Uh, I, th I think Solaris pick picked a Sylph up. That will uh, kind of mitigate some of the need to heal, but you kind of you want to build a little bit on the off, a little bit on offense as early as possible. Trying, trying to you know, kind of power overwhelm as early as possible so that the need to heal is mitigated. Uh, totally agreed. So uh, we're getting some new checks here. Uh, Haram finishing ordeals, and we're seeing that it is a legend sword there as Rybon finds his back attack Luge at ordeals. Possum tackling uh, Baron in, and he will get through uh, with Dark Imps over at the karate spot. Here we are getting a little bit of a glimpse of the impact of that lack of back row glitch that you were referring to. Um, this is a very slow spot, edge is very fast, and, and uh, Possum will get through no problem, but we can certainly see uh, that they are punchy. And even if they were back, if they were back row glitched, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. Uh, Possum receives a tower key, so that is an additional boss check uh, for his troubles for whenever he decides to uh, go underground. I think when you th the thing about having a two character uh, two character party f uh, for the overall, especially it makes sense with Edge, as uh, you have a lot kind of probably the strongest power overwhelming that isn't a foo. And it's also Berserker, and it doesn't take too many uh, um, kind of pick up, uh, just, chat, just just looting to get what you need for Edge. Might, although some sometimes it might be hard, although other times it's it's a uh, it's every, it's every Hanzo steals everywhere. So, but the real reason to do that is so if you get an early gold bez, you don't have to worry about. Uh, Kind of using life potions and consuming uh, uh, too many uh, veils. Like, in fact, you just you, the sequence shortens a bit and fav and kind of favors the the, the the smaller party. So it's so it's one of those kind of um, exp 
requires a bit of experience and that that required palm on on the way to the top is uh, very valuable but no so there's definitely no uh true white mages in the seed just well but you, ha you should be able to get enough offense uh early, especially if you if you fight all the boss uh, the necessary boss spots that give you key item skip the ones that are not relevant and just you should be in a pick up a f and if you do some of the trap chests in Eblin, uh, and Z and the un uh, and the path to the hook. Some some of those trap chests. You'll have you should should pick enough offense to uh, kind of deal with uh, what uh, I think. Which, I think it's rubicant or uh, elements. It's either one, and it doesn't, and it shouldn't matter. Yeah, the trap chests can definitely have a significant amount of XP. Uh, there are mute knives for sale um, in Fabul, and I believe Solaris and Possum both have them. Uh, if you look at that Mad Ogre chest, um, the mute knife will make very quick work uh, of those Mad Ogres. You might also see maybe a cheeky steal of a Bacchus wine or two. I don't believe that they were for sale in the hook shop, but I did uh, miss it. So we have a lot of crisscrossing here. Um, it's there's with the boss hunt objectives there's been a lot of discussion uh, in the community at least with the people that I've, I've spoken with about you know how quickly do you fade checks and and how how aggressive are you with just doing your boss checks with a starting hook you know theoretically you can get underground whenever you want and it seems that our, the majority of our runners are doing our sphere zero checks uh, with the Tela, doing ordeals makes sense because you want to go ahead and get Tela online because while Tela is not necessarily a, a terribly powerful sage, there is a, a tremendous amount of utility that he has in supporting a melee party like we uh, have seen. Um, you know, finding the tower key uh, at Baron Inn means that, you know, that's another uh, check and maybe you're incentivized to go ahead and do, you know, to do both tower checks while you're there. But the, the big goal that I've seen in the asyncs and the community races and, and the casual races is how quickly can you get into face check mode? And that really uh, boils down to how aggressive do you want to be um, in getting on the ground? And I have to imagine with uh, these four runners, um, they're quickly getting through their spots and it's only a matter of time before someone, quite frankly, aggressively heads down to hook route. I, I think... When it comes to the face checks, I think you kind of worry about that late game. Early, you, I think you want to do as many kind of overworld checks before you are forced underground. The, um, the, I, at least from from doing an, a few a few of these seeds, it, it it seems that they're um that the like if you basically do the common thing, the common uh boss checks, and then you do the extra fit extra checks and if there are any other over overall checks like say uh harp or zot they may be worth doing and they and while they and and you just kind of want to do more you just want to kind of face check every boss and even if they don't provide the correct boss that you need to kill you prob you're gonna gain a key item and it's like it's it's one less key item you have to worry about and it might not even it might not even be darkness. You pr your chances of getting early darkness probably doesn't. Ex it's 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 slim, but it's not even. It, you, but even then, you're not gonna you're you're gonna get a lot of um, kind of necessary key items for later. So it's one of those. I, I'll let's do whatever you can for now, and then uh, then do hook as quickly as possible, and then see and see how the rest of the seat uh, kind of uh, just lands. You know, just see what happens. For sure. Um, I think two of the most valuable key items that you can get in a flag set like this are uh, Earth Crystal and Baron, and Baron Key. Because uh, as we're getting our look at the first trap chest, Rybon is doing the traps in Evelyn. We've seen Evelyn uh, looted uh, by a couple of our runners, but I believe this is our first look at the traps. And the first one's going to be the Glass Hat, which, again, uh, while you can't berserk with a Glass Hat for a, front, well, for a character that might be stuck in the front row, that's some uh, very solid protection. But, um, you know, going up the Tower of Zot is two boss checks, plus you see who's at Dwarf 2. Um, and that de-incentivizes de uh, Dwarf Castle even more in this flag set because there's no warp glitch. And uh, Baron Key is another three boss checks as well. Um, we haven't seen either one of those. Uh, in fact, none of the, um, you know, we, we've seen, uh, in terms of key items, all we've seen is a Legend Sword. 
Um, so we've knocked off some boss checks, but we haven't really found any progression that says, all right, I can go ahead and check these extra bosses before I go underground. So judging by the comprehensive nature that our runners are going with these Sphere Zero checks, uh, despite the fact that the way that they're routing is differently, none of it is really paying off all that much. With Rybon doing the traps down at Evelyn, that tells me that once he's done getting this XP, that this is his party that he's going with, and he's more than likely going to head down the hook route sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's definitely when you're com when you're, when you're committing to uh, check when you going to the Ep castle uh, uh, looting, like you're actually going f you're going for all of the, including the trap chests. Yeah, it's it's time. It's 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 there. It's it's really it, it's. That, that, that definitely is a signal. Um, um, I think that there is. I think even though I disagree with the warp idea, like you, you're doing a boss hunt. So one, while well, yeah, you don't have to do the, you, you don't have to um, like go through the boss to get the, the key item. It's kind of a trap because if some sometimes if it's if say it's a demist or a bo required boss that is actually required. You're, 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 uh, you're, the, the, the warp glitch might give you make, make you fade uh, fade uh, the that location and that's not not always something like the fading sometimes is in is unintentional like sometimes it just ends up being that way but what it's it's kind of one of those consequences if you're at least if you're gonna uh, if you have the warp glitch disabled you are you know that you're gonna have to complete complete the um, the entire set. With like with the boss, you're like you're gonna do the key item check and still see check what the boss is before even if even if that doesn't pan out to be any of anything of any consequence. So I think that with the with the demist being like a, essentially half an objective that it might actually that demist might actually gate something. You you are con you you don't want to fade a boss check intentionally. I think in this in in I, whether the, whether it's the blue moon or the red moon. I think it's a matter of timing also. Um, you know, if you can do Zod ahead of time, then you know who's in the second spot, and you can even face check. Um, you can walk up, and if, if, you know, depending on how aggressive you feel like fading bosses, if the little boss that pops up behind King Gaia's throne is not required, you can go ahead and just kind of head out of there immediately. Um, we see crystal armor that can't be worn, but can certainly be sold on Rybon's side in the second trap chest. Uh, we see Harumph uh, more than likely heading down the hook route, so he will be first there. Solaris uh, found a Leviathan uh, summon along the way uh, and also has Palum. So between Quake and um, Leviathan, that's a really solid amount of AoE if they can stay alive. So for someone like po Possum who waited uh, to go ahead and get their characters and get levels on them, Solaris is going to have the MP to go ahead and uh, cast Leviathan, whereas Possum will have to take at least one trap chest and then have Radius Sling to go ahead and go through. One comment in chat is that we are <laughs> not short of anchors. That is true, uh, especially when you consider the fact that we have seen a cursed ring in this sea. Uh, so anchoring should not be an issue in the slightest. Um, if they all end up, uh, well, I guess uh, Harumph is not going to be doing the traps over at Evelyn, but that crystal armor is going to give some early money. Uh, looks like the Leviathan was for sale in um, in Evelyn underneath, as well as some very handy hourglasses. Uh, with a uh, possible gauntlet uh, that could be required. Those hourglasses could be uh, of a huge impact. Um, things are starting to cook as uh, Harumph is cleaning up his inventory, getting ready to go underground, and Rybon is probably not far behind. I believe he just needs to go get his hovercraft. Oops, where's my hovercraft? That, ha that, happens, that happens enough. Um, I think... Uh, I think... Uh, uh, construct team construction, I think, in this flag set is interesting. You you know who your uh, who your characters be, but you also have uh, you you always practically gonna uh, I think more often than not have a anchor or end or backup anchor as needed. You're, yeah, you only have like a little more than half the characters. Usually, you'll have you'll kind of get you'll get what you need. It's not it's. I don't, we're anchoring is usually not something you have to worry about, and given that you know, also that uh, anchoring is is also defined is not defined by Cecil, but whoever is in the middle spot, uh, you can, you have pretty much a lot of con anchoring control. It's and so I never it I, I think it's, um, 
you never really i mean this i mean cursed ring is definitely a sweet spot but i have never i don't think in this flag set you're going to be worried about anchoring as long as you keep make sure that you have it all set up properly and when when it when uh, whenever the uh, situation continues, especially when a wyvern without that isn't even on witch burn mode uh, shows up yeah, um, these uh, we really have anchoring set up uh, both ways. Um, you know, we we think about slow anchoring when it comes to Zoromus or when it comes to um, you know uh, the King Queen spot or, or some of the more difficult spots above the moon. But anchoring very much works the other way too. Uh, if you get a uh, a fast anchor like you have with, um, uh, I'm sorry, I am captivated by Harumph. I wonder if this damn one's gonna get one more shot off, or if that hourglass did the trick. This is this chest is the absolute bane of my existence. The stalemen are fast. Uh, unless you are RA1 or have some kind of protective gear, the stalemen can make you go to sleep. It's like, oh, let me just go ahead and hit this on the way down. This chest uh, can be incredibly rude and, and problematic. Uh, but uh, that ninja blade is not nothing. Uh, so uh, Harumph is rewarded for the pain. Uh, but to your point about um, anchoring, uh, I think they have it set both ways. Edge is a great fast anchor uh, for you know a lot of the overworld as well as for uh, some early spots like Dwarf One. Um, uh, but they also have plenty of anchors uh, on the slower side to keep everyone at RA One. Yeah, I think uh, I always I always forget that the Stalemen Trust. I never I usually uh, try. Uh, Never, don't usually worry about stalemate too much, but it's like, but it, I think the status effects uh, operate the same way as enemies that you do. Where when you've, when the enemy or yourself has emptied the ATB and then get hit by a status, a punching with a status effect, then it's it it, 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 it works hundred percent of the time. As soon as it's immediate, it has to be like immediate, like uh, after it happens. So like, so is that. So, so you oftentimes when you see this as like an hourglass is used, uh, mo the monster is uh, has, has has pushed its turn even though it, even though it stopped, but it has to finish uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the fighting order. Uh, the the monster has to uh, complete its turn before getting into stasis. But when it's once once it's completed its turn, it has an empty ATB, and anytime that when it's empty. Ev um, it, any status effects, like particularly uh, when you use the Medusa arrow to do uh, some fun instant death through petrification, uh, it's glorious. Uh, also works the same way where if you like, executed when when a character executes a turn and then immediately gets punched from a stalemate, uh, it's nappy time. Yep, uh, definitely incredibly rude. Awesome taking the time to steal some Bacchus, but we are standing. And which means that it's likely in one of the shops we'll go ahead and find it. But with such a melee heavy party, and again, uh, a lack of white mages not named Tella uh, means that there is a lack of ability to cast Berserk. Um, he is definitely just trying, I, I would imagine, picking up a few. Uh, he doesn't know what's on uh, that is Elements or Ruby at the Ruby spot, and we none of us know what's at the King Queen spot. But I think that he is looking at that saying, you know what, uh, we'll go ahead and... Um, uh, get some Bacchus wine to make sure that we have that little bit of safety. Also, noticing that full moon at the Evelyn shop means that we don't need to back row glitch. We can just literally back row. If you put that full moon into uh, Edge's right hand, you have a viable um, back rowed uh, character. So that might add a little bit of protection. Um, we see back to back uh, Stalemate chests here. Uh, Harumph, I guess, doing it again? Uh, gaining that ninja blade. I don't know if that was a save scum or if he did it uh, again on purpose to go ahead and. Oh no, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm looking at the. I'm getting confused. He's doing the Eblin traps. My apologies. Uh, looks like Rybon is uh, going to be trailing Solaris as both of our these runners are heading down the hook route, and we'll see who's in the king queen spot momentarily. I think the, the, the thing with berserkers uh, is a kind of. Um... I, I I I mean Kane is a berserker too, but I I would con I would cons consider him more of a like a like a uh, a berserker where you can it's you don't have to use berserk on him you can use jump and be an additional berserker. But it, while Kane is not in the seat, the edge having a boomerang uh, you know is basically one uh, one additional background berserker, which is a which is kind of it was really invaluable as uh, that being in the back row provides additional def doubles the defense of 
of, of the character while while in the background and it which didn't typically uh strong, strong stronger characters have uh much heavier armor so C so a cecil or a cane would have much will have a much better time faring against damage and will stay a lot longer so uh, always having a back row option uh especially in for, especially with form edge with the boomerang is really it's really pretty strong so we see a relatively free fight with Maga Sisters at the King Queen spot. Uh, this spot does punch and it is fast, but we, uh, the magic is incredibly low here. So the magic uh, attacks won't do much of anything, and the um, the mute knife that we see uh, that Solaris has as he corrects the hands to make sure that the back rowing will be correct is going to go ahead and cut through these um, uh, these Maga Sisters very very quickly. Uh, it is unlikely that there's going to be any kind of problem here whatsoever and we will soon learn if it is Ruby or Elements at the Ruby spot. Um, elements is required, uh, as is Ruby, so either way, our runners are going to go ahead and knock off a uh, required boss check along the way. Yeah, I, 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 usually, usually in a punchy spot, I, uh, Mega Sisters don't really punch. If you have uh, Mindy, uh, Mindy in the front row, like basically Cindy, who is the middle... The, the sister you have to do the most damage to, uh, t essentially punches in the back row. So punching, you never really worry. And I'm, wonder I'm starting to wonder, is this vanilla? We'll have to see. It's definitely, right now it's quarter vanilla as we see it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's quarter vanilla. Oh, well, it's still, it shouldn't be too bad. Tella surprisingly could be the MVP for, for this battle. Uh, once, when, once we've done more deals, uh, Tella, becomes a uh, powerhouse as uh, elements is when you know their elemental weakness, but uh, it's kind of like, uh, the ghost when you know the bosses and fire and he starts with fire. Uh, they are they are extra weak to the element, and it makes and you can and you can make uh, Tella look like uh, the strong, strongest mage in in this party at least. Well, maybe right here with Leviathan is not too shabby either. But yeah. The, we're about to see one of my favorite things uh, about the scripting of here, and that's Ruby at this spot is actually a mage. So uh, that mute knife is going to be doing uh, quite a bit of work here, and they want to get out of this phase as quickly as possible, because while the magic isn't that high, the group glare will not feel great. So Tell is the MVP, uh, I think, because of the fact that uh, he was able to go ahead and zerk up uh, Edge. You see that 16, 1700 uh, amount of damage uh, combined with his Leviathan along the way means that they're going to go ahead and get through this uh, spot fairly quickly. Yeah, uh, well, unfortunately, unfortunately wasn't able to uh, kind of break, uh, kind of get um, kill kill off immediately. Usually in higher HP spots, you're able to kind of avoid kind of like the the midway form, which is essentially between Rubicant into Kenazo. Uh, they're, they're kind of effectively two bosses. Uh, visually, they're four, but they're really two physical bosses so they, and they all and the first two sh share uh, I mean the third the, and the last two share HP uh, it, between the forms so it's hard it, sometimes it's hard to get through but this is not, still not too bad um, as uh, having having got a split HP from the Rukin spawn uh, makes them kind of ha not as not as um, um, tanky as they should, as you would normally expect them to. So, shouldn't be too long. As Solaris shouldn't have too much, too many problems. And, and uh, Val is not this version of Val, not a threat. Yep. One of my favorite parts about these runners uh, is that we have all this divergence at the beginning, different order of picking up characters and when to pick up your characters and where to go and how to do it. Uh, and yet here we are with uh, three of our, nunner, our runners all very much neck and neck and Harumph really not that far behind whatsoever. Uh, the only major difference I can tell as a Solaris uh, is quickly through this Elvitz fight, and Possum looks like he's a, a shot or two away from, from that, is that I don't believe that um, Rybon purchased the Mute Knife from Fabul. Uh, that is the largest difference that I can tell, um, but beyond that, all three of these runners uh, have completed, to my knowledge, uh, all of their Sphere Zero checks. Possum's getting his crumble now, um, and Solaris, Possum, Rybon, all within I don't know, maybe 90 seconds of each other, and Harumph uh, descending down the hook right now, also not far behind. Um, 
it's uh it you know 45 minutes has often been referred to as kind of the the metric for okay i got down the hook right in 45 minutes that's pretty good when you consider the fact that we have challenges like t pro and the limited uh character pool that also adds to it um to have these three runners down at 32 minutes is <laughs> it, it, it's not at all surprising uh, as we see King Queen Evelyn at the top of the tower, but um, it doesn't mean it's any less impressive. Yeah, I think, I think uh, the Venaz de Cremina races, specifically, uh, especially hook percentage, just doing hook routes, and sometimes getting to getting to the hook route is uh, kind of a difficult matter indeed. But this is where this is forced hook, where we, where uh, every um, every seed rolled guarantees hook. And so the um, magma key will probably be in the, in the most uh, nonsensical place because hey, you're already on the ground. Why is this magma key here? Only good enough for a key, only good enough for key item space. Uh, and yeah, it's it's very impressive uh, how fast and seeing the pos uh, seeing solar and possible on the same wavelength. Hey, it's a king queen Evelyn at top of tower. Why not do that immediately? It's, it's free, and if you get in the key item is uh, worth something. Sometimes it's the, key, it's the tower key itself uh, worth worth traversing for the free experience and and maybe some looting. Like just you know, um, I don't think we've seen Siren Smith, but uh, as soon as they um, probably one of the things that be done here is to um, you know go to um, Tamra or. Uh, um, Dwarf Castle and check for sirens, or what? And probably for some, uh, for some uh, Bacchus wine, as this, as the parties are currently uh, fairly, uh, uh, not, well, it's more of a hybrid, but still want berserk for uh, your berserkers. Yep, it's amazing seeing Solaris and Possum basically in complete line uh, lockstep right now. I love absolutely everything about that. Um, with only three key items found, I mean, the key items have to be somewhere. We haven't seen D-Mist, that's another item. Uh, and tower key in hand, uh, you're 100% correct. It makes total sense to go ahead and, um, you know, uh, just go ahead and take care of this now. Rybon's done a couple of interesting things. Uh, one, uh, he's taking some trap chests down here. I don't know if he, he didn't loot as much as the other runners did uh, at the very beginning. And <laughs> he finds a crystal sword on T-Pro in Lower Babel. That is not very likely. Seed has got jokes between the crystal armor and now the crystal sword. I mean, he's got money. Uh, but man, that's got to feel uh, a certain certain kind of way. Another thing Rybon did during uh, his elements fight, uh, to your point, uh, that boss is actually two bosses in one with an HP refill, is that he went ahead and um, did reflect strats to avoid the reflect to make that fight go a little bit faster. Um, by as Rybon finds a coffin, by taking these trap chests now, he's losing the ability to possibly steal the sirens later. It's not. There's a 10% chance that there won't be sirens in shops somewhere, whether it's underground or on the moon. We know they're not the Evelyn shop. But it's interesting that he's going ahead and um, and doing that now. Yeah, I mean, you're prop. I mean, with a tell, with a, uh, his his part is uh, definitely has a teller. So you're not. Uh, I mean, go going for a quick uh, trip to uh, do a demission grind might be a thing. Although I don't. I don't see that happening too often, but it, I mean, there's, there's, I'm sure there's circumstances where if there are no sirens and you have a tell, you prop, that might not be uh, far fetched. I think. Um, so, um, the, I think, I think you know, you're, you're just gonna maybe just assuming that you're gonna use like sirens and like maybe like for King Ryu's instead of an egg grind. I think that like the key item situation can be uh, probably this point stage we only have what four at at most for runners, so uh, it might be that the key item density might be on the moon, but your bo the bosses you need to collect to to come to you know get access to Z might just be on Earth, or at least most the majority of them. So it you you probably just you know use you, I think you get a, like a, a siren uh, not, at least one siren as your starting kit, so that will probably what will drive some sort of like kind of a King Ryu uh, on, on the moon, like maybe a Bahamut or, or a Lunar Subterrain. Yep. 
Um, you know, sirens might not be necessary. Uh, we haven't found a lot of key items. Uh, it is worth noting that we did find a Baron Keep behind that King Queen uh, uh, Eblin, so that's three more boss checks. And because K Summon is on, another two opportunities for key items. So, with how little progression we've seen, it wouldn't be shocking to find some kind of progression that does run through Baron. It also uh, routes in nicely because uh, should they find the pan down here, they'll do shield of one and two. It's more than likely, again, with so few key items found, we're now up to four, and only two of them lead to bosses, and we've already checked one, um, that when we route in shield one and two, that Baron can go ahead and get checked along the way. Solaris and Possum are almost concurrently finished, uh, going to tell us what we find from the Super Cannon Room. And it is a rat tail, so that's another key item, which might lead also to some kind of progression. It's interesting diversion. Solaris has deci decided to go to get the um, to Fame March, get the free key item, and check the boss. Check do essentially a boss check, it's, it, and it's a good face check as you know who that boss, who the bosses are, for the most part before you go into the fight. Whereas Possum has decided a dwarf, and that's it. it I mean, you're still getting two. Two boss fights, but uh, Solaris will get more key items. Uh, key items, while still important, uh, probably like in, in races where objectives were that are gated by key items, usually you're looking for them to, you know, to go to a to to, to complete a certain objective. Uh, boss checks kind of move it to like, hey, I'm gonna get the key items at this boss spot because hey, I need the bo boss check. But hey, if I get the key item. Uh, it's cool, and if it, and if I collect ten, that's nice. It's, but if and usually, um, especially with with a hook route, the key items you get probably eh, it's like it's okay. I could maybe gonna do them later, but uh, but more likely you're gonna they're gonna gate some underground some underground access like a sealed cave or tower key or pen or some something that you'll need later. And so it's like one of the, it's. It's, you're collecting key item. The key item progression does is not as emphasized as much. It's, it's different. It's, it's an interesting change of pace. So it appears that Solaris found the Darkness Crystal uh, in the Fan March freebie. Um, we see a sparkle, and we know that has to be Mylon Z. Um, we do not have a single Moon Boss um, as one of our required bosses. And if I'm Solaris, I'm now looking and saying, okay. How many bosses do I not have access to? We don't have Earth Crystal, so we don't have access to Zot 2, but we do have access to Zot 1. We don't have Twin Heart, we don't have Package, and we don't have Luca. That means that we don't have access to four bosses. But we have the entire Giant, we have all of Baron, we have the entire LST, we have the Fey March, um, we have Dwarf 1 and 2. It becomes a matter of how quickly are you going to go ahead and just start flat out face checking bosses. Possum gets through this karate, uh, no problem. Um, and we'll see who's behind Zot, uh, who's with, uh, behind Dwarf 2 uh, as Harumph uh, gets through uh, his. Uh, uh, no, nope, it looks like Harumph might have had a wipe and is going to be trying his elements fight again. Um, but. Solaris might say, you know what, what are the chances, as we find a uh, required Vigan here at Dwarf 2, what are the chances that, because it's it's 7 out of 8 bosses that you need, what are the chances that I need those key items to go ahead and finish the seed? Uh, you might see just flat out face checking and going as quickly as possible. I think, uh, maybe, uh, face checking, if, at least to me, Makes more sense if you're doing uh, that. You're you've done everything, more most part, whatever is uh, on the overworld and underground, and then you have LST, which might be gating something. That is, I think that's the the the, the time it, it makes sense to face check. I think when you're still kind of early and you're low on key items, your access is still limited. You don't have every you don't have everything available to you. So I I think that if you can. Take on the bosses that are available, like say the Mylon, the Mylon Z on the Azura spot. I would at least attempt that. See if that gets you uh, a key item that un un that gates something. So, it, well, yeah, the key item might not get you something, like but pa something like package that that still has value because that's a key that's that gates a boss and might be, and usually something that uh, 
you normally would would kind of like uh, last location because it's not the not the most appealing check. But in a in this kind of race, in a boss check race, you having that check av available and then checking it, especially when you do it early enough, you have some time to make. You can you can make up the time. But when you last location it, you're not in the you're definitely not gonna not gonna be the driver's seat at that point. So I think key items uh, early on is is kind of more important if you get them it's nice and it's more of a nice to you than anything though yep it's uh the decision of what to fade and when um is i think something as we approach tournament time which begins in, in a week and a half or so i think the 16th is our first day is something that we're all trying to go ahead and figure out uh possum showing us that even when eddie is not the seed eddie is still the worst um, because you have uh, a Requiem uh, Harp as our Supersmith, um, has, as he has acquired both parts of Forge, and uh, we have no Eddie of the Seed. Um, that shop having Zeus Gauntlets is nice, uh, also protect rings, but those Zeus Gauntlets to me, with the parties that we have, uh, probably the thing that grab my attention the most. Uh, especially if we find the pass, I think we might see Possum back down there again. Um, it's hard on T-Pro to go ahead and... Uh, uh, pick up everything we need. Uh, Possum also showing us that we have Sirens for sale in Tamara. I'm not sure if uh, Solaris checked down there or not. Uh, but speaking of Solaris, we are finding a required Golbez. Um, uh, he was able to go ahead and get Venom off. For those of you wondering, why would you go ahead and poison your own party? Uh, Deathlike, do you want to go ahead and explain that? Sure. So there's a kind of a status priority. It affects spells more than it does than it does uh, status effects afflict by what through what through punching so um, what it is is um, there so this is kind of a progression of statuses that uh, can be applied and so something like pig piggy is has a higher priority than say poison poison is pretty low on the totem tree I think berserk is effectively the lowest even though it's not the actual lowest but it's one of the lowest so so if you're poisoned, like you, which would be inflicted by you from Dr. Luke, typically uh, you can't berserk a character that is poisoned. So in this case, Gol we're taking advantage of that versus Golbez, where poison is higher up than paralysis. That allows uh, that allows um, allows um, the, the paralysis to not be applied, and allows us, you know you can do a few cool you can do a few more critical things while uh, even though they're uh, the characters are set to die, but you get you, you get time and opportunity to, to put up a, a, a star veil immediately, as that is that usually makes the uh, fight a lot more safe and a lot more completable. Yeah. Show how good our runners are tonight. Um, you might see them uh, doing kind of what we refer to as inventory management uh, when they know they have a couple of seconds while an action is happening during the fight. Um, you might go ahead and see that um, uh, they're moving things around so that they know where items that they're going to use often automatically are. Um, Solaris went ahead and uh, was running while the crumple skip of Golbez was happening because it's just that much faster to have the running animation as he finds the pass, which is phenomenal in this flag set, especially when you're in full-blown face check mode makes it a lot easier to go ahead and just look for uh, what's been referred to as um, face and free. Do your free checks and face and get out of the moon. Because that way you don't necessarily have to go back. So that's a huge pickup for Solaris. But just the fact that, he, you know, he's aware enough to go ahead and save those couple of seconds during a run buffer to go ahead and, um, uh, which we call it? Um, and run to, to make the crumble go that much faster. I mean, this is just how incredibly good these runners are that we have. It's, a, it's something that you uh, that you don't you want to think you don't usually think of, but you want to optimize putting uh, item you know item uh, friendly battle items at the towards the top. You do you, and hey, uh, we, we see that team is right for Solaris. See. Uh, might not produce something, but uh, some, right now see, it's probably the most important important thing. As a Demas check might gate some more important check uh, down the road, and there have been seeds where uh, have, there, uh, the Demas hunt for the required gated uh, 
key item is has is is a thing. So it, right now, um, hopefully from Solaris it may pay off. But doing Baron um, Baron Castle, uh, you know, is, pay, is certainly at least paying off. Pass uh, certainly a gold mine when when you especially if you don't even have to do an LST. Pass is your is your best is your uh, ticket to Z. And that's the quickest way of doing it. Instead of having to probably dive like what a five minute walk. I don't I have not timed it. I know it's a long enough walk that uh, if when you don't have to do it, you don't do it. That's so and so you'd probably want instead so you'd probably want to like aim towards like a quick egg grind and then go directly towards Z when uh, when going is is, uh, is uh, available. Yeah. Um... Solaris's Demist is just incredibly cruel here. Um, to show you, I mean, he's anchored. He has Tella in the center slot, and uh, that Demist just hit three times and went right back to Miss Phase. Um, this is it, on one end. You get some time to go ahead and recover, as you can see, while he's in the Miss Phase. Um, but here we're really seeing the lack of the impact of not having a White Mage. We don't have a lot of people to go ahead and get a blink. We don't have a lot of people that can go ahead and cure up. Um, uh, to your point that you had earlier about uh, Sylph, um, Brady is going to try to get Sylph off and maybe we'll get a little bit of XP to some of our runners. But we see how... <laughs> As we see Tella punching. Oh, I love everything about that. That had to be a miss menu, but that filled my heart so much. An angry old man. Wildly punching at mist, like a like like a Homer Simpson's father, angry yelling at the cloud. Oh, that was glorious. I'm gonna ask him about that later. Anyway, um, we're seeing probably the first time just how difficult this can really be to do um, these bosses on this flag set without a legitimate white mage. And they, um, you when you when you have uh, a true white mage, uh, you have pretty much a cushion. Uh, tell a well. The, probably the one of the best utility mages is still uh, he's, he's still fighting that uh, MP craze where uh, yeah you you need all those soma drops to go to Tella sometimes and, <laughs> and blink while uh, low MP caustic spell uh, he can, uh, and he's he's slow and you can only cast he can only cast it as as long as he's still upright and doesn't take much for Tella to go down so it's it, 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 there are certain situations where um, you you don't have you won't have a kind of a more a flexible uh, set set of characters. It's, uh, it's one it's um, you know uh, usually usually when you would try to get a few levels, maybe do some uh, maybe a partial a grind before even uh, trying to do the uh, this particular spot, the Odin spot. It, it's very punchy and and very fast. So Demist. Uh, doing doing uh, the best uh, can to slow Solaris down. Uh, yep, yeah, this is uh, definitely a little uh, pretty time consuming. It's got to feel uh, a little little frustrating at, at this point for sure, um, especially with this virus about to mess. Rybon uh, showing us the beauty of RA1. Uh, for those that don't know, um, the system with which um, Final Fantasy IV decides when everybody goes can be a little bit complicated. Um, but the short uh, version of it is that if you set up everything as you want, you can go ahead and make your characters what are referred to as RA1, or Relative, Ag Relative Agility 1, which basically means to go right away. Uh, that's the very, very, very simplified version of it. Uh, Rybomb was able to go ahead and clear out uh, some trap chests in uh, Self Cave without ever being attacked because he had a quaking palm at the top. So that's a nice way to go ahead and maybe get some gear, get some loot, get some levels uh, before making another pass, um, not only for some of these above ground checks like Baron Key, which he now has access to, uh, or maybe he'll be heading off to the moon with these extra levels. Uh, Solaris, uh, legend that he is, um, gets a pink tail for his troubles. Unfortunately, Adamant is not on. And if this Demis does not pan out into something significant, um, I can I can feel his pain. I can hear his glorious voice in my head right now. Um, uh, I, if at some point we'll talk about following all these runners, um, Solaris's commentary um, is as good as his gameplay, which is basically saying it's it's truly elite. So um, I look forward to discussing this fight with him, and you should also all look forward to going ahead and hearing what he has to say about it. 
Yeah, it's 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 something to behold when you uh, kind of under leveled for the fight and still win the fight. Uh, they, uh, I mean, losing pro is a lot more of a time waste than completing. In some, although in some cases where if you consume, if you spend too much time at a fight, you you might have you could have wiped uh, quite a bit of time off if you had you grinded even a little bit. Uh, the cleverness of grinding, um, you know, when a self cave. Uh, there is a lot of value to doing that, and, tip, and especially for the loot. But also, when you, when you, I mean, yeah, with the palum and being able to essentially go first, get the quake off, and not and not get hit. Uh, nice, nice Hansa steal there from Solaris. Um, there, there is some value to it. It's even better if there if there are no sirens available. Although we do know sirens are a Tomra, so that lessens the blow. But you know, I'm not. I, I don't think I pick, uh, paid attention to what was picked up, but looking at Solaris wants to see the outcome of hoping it's an important key item. You know, maybe it be packaged, uh, you know, because uh, it has has been known to happen here. Ouch. 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 It's, it, it's not... It, oh, man, I cannot. I can... Between getting the spoon... Immediately after that, which as somebody pointed out in chat, they could have darted for, you know, probably quite not to make that fight, you know, an hour and a half earlier. And then not only to get a zonk, like if you get a zonk, like whatever, to get a this is a PG stream. Friggin' samurai bow, uh, at the end of all that. Uh, and then he's gonna go ahead and discover that uh we'll see how possum handles this fight. Uh he has a spoon, and so he'll be uh darting uh that more than likely. Um, to find that there was a required boss uh, in Bygen here at, uh, at Dwarf 2 all along. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's not going to feel great for our runners. Um, it's interesting that no one has hit up the... Yeah, 8700 right off the bat right there. Um, it's interesting that nobody has quite hit up um, uh, the moon yet. I have to imagine that's going to be imminent for most of our runners. Uh, this I uh, don't kind of need to put together how many uh, how many bosses are left on the on the docket that that still need to be completed. It feels like there's still quite a quite a bit to find. So chances are it's starting to look like the moon is not haunted. That is, which is not. Uh, um, I mean, for for us viewers, that is more content. There'll be there'll be more there will be more boss fights. But as for the runners, that that is looking to be. Uh, well, I guess we're gonna have to grind on the moon. Not and especially with uh, I don't think we have found alt gauntlet yet. So I'm I'm pretty amped for the best alt gauntlet possible ever at the Ogo spot. So that could be more thought, and, and I'm sure that will be. Uh, a favorite talk if that uh, comes to fruition yeah um it's funny because with this flag set and uh also chat please let me know uh, i can go to push talk on my discord uh the rain is coming down pretty good so if that is impacting the quality of your stream i'll mute and uh take care of that on my end i'm currently not on push to talk but it certainly can be uh so chat if that's an issue for you please go ahead and let me know and apologies in advance um you know for, for most of us we'll go ahead and depending on where the gauntlet is, if it's at a particularly root spot like you're talking about, whether it's Ogo or whether it's... Um, uh, I personally recently discovered the joys of Crystal Sword <laughs> earlier today. Um, uh, you know, these root spots that we tend to go ahead and kind of reset out of. Um, uh, as we see, just how uh, that spoon makes a huge difference as Possum is able to go ahead and get through. Um, uh, the missed a little bit faster than the Solaris was, so that's a time save. Um, we've seen some rude gauntlets, um, and we haven't seen gauntlet yet, so whether it's on the giant or on the moon, um, it could certainly still be an earth crystal or a package or something like that, but, uh, there is a possibility of seeing a very rude, um, uh, gauntlet. Um, that is a very much a strong possibility. Yeah, I think of I, I'm trying to I'm trying to recall. Uh, what are we still missing? Elements? We haven't seen Ruby though. I think we've seen elements, and I don't think we've I think we've seen early antline, but not a mom bomb. So that's um, that's not too many bosses that are too, are, are too are too nasty off the table. I mean, Ruby can uh, at certain spots like the Ogo spot can be very devastating. Uh, 
if you've not seen Quad Nine uh, glares, uh, they they are tons of fun to see. There there are so there are certain spots where, if, especially in a in a bo uh, a boss hunt, you are you kind of know uh, at least at least hopefully remember uh, what what the uh, you know the what the strengths of that spot or the or the weaknesses of that spot have to be. You know HP. Magic power, uh, their how punchy they are. Those are the kind of the three characteristics you just have to rem really remember about uh, particular spots. And and sometimes about the specific bosses, like uh, if you find a mom bomb, uh, that mom bomb uh, surprisingly takes a, kind of eats a lot of HPs from from a lot of spots where it's actually it becomes slow, strangely weaker than you think it would be. So, so those are, they're just so the nuances of bosses. Uh, can speed stuff certainly speed up uh, what uh, what we find on the moon and whatever's left. For sure, uh, we found uh, four bosses. We found elements uh, DKC, Golbez, and Bygen, uh, which means three out of these four are remaining. Um, again, uh, our runners do not have access to four spots: uh, Zot Two, Twin Harp, Package, and Loop and Key. Um, Hotsum appears to be our first person to head to the moon. Uh, Solaris doing some shopping and forging, probably not that far behind. Um, Rybon completing uh, Baron, probably going down to the basement, will more than likely do um, uh, that demist to get the item check as well. Um, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what Possum does. Um, you know, will he be resetting out, uh, especially having the pass in hand? Um, uh, sometimes you'll see people that might want to go ahead and do giant first so that they don't have to worry about a uh, walk the LST twice. But um, with the pass in hand, that's not really uh, relevant as Harumph is setting up uh, Shield 1 over here because none of us have found the pan. Um, so it wouldn't shock me to see Possum if it's a long boss or something that's time consuming and not for nothing with this party and these levels, some of them really might be um, just resetting out. Um, three bosses to find. Uh, you have, I believe, eight boss checks that occur here on the moon when you include the giant with Darkness Crystal. So we'll see what his approach is compared to some of our other runners. It might be interesting if Moon is act kind of haunted, because uh, I don't think uh, any of our runners have even uh, kind of really looked to take take on the uh, the, the ones at Fe the bosses at Fade March. I mean, the likely, even though K Summon probably doesn't, uh, is about, kind of registers about this, a little about the same as, uh, K Moon, but it, it, you know, it's, there's two checks, and there's still a lot of, like, uh, key items that kind of gate, that will gate other potential, other kind of chains. Like, um, you know, like something like a package is really terminal. It just, it, it goes, it opens, it does its thing, opens up, um, but something like Twin Harp, We'll get another key, another uh, key item, which will make up maybe let's like, say the Earth Crystal. So, a lot of the key items left can be chained that might not in, include the Moon, and that and it is possible, and not not unlikely, but it's possible that uh, something like what we might find on the Moon might not uh, give us the bosses we are looking for. And they could be gated, and they can still be gated behind a lot of the key items that are still left on the table. Uh, for sure. Um, in terms of, of quick fights, uh, we've seen uh, Kaip Kaipo guards, and we've seen King Queen Evelyn. I don't believe we've seen Baron guards, and I don't believe that we've seen Waterhound. Uh, so should one of those be up here, um, it wouldn't surprise me to go ahead and see, um, especially the hourglasses for the Baron guards, to see those taken. Um, you might even see a Life 2 grind uh, with Tella, if, should we happen to find the Baron guards up here. Um, but that is Evil Wall, and that is the opposite of Free. Uh, and I think Possum is kind of showing us his hand here a little bit, where um, he's saying, you know what, I only I don't have access to four bosses, so we're just going to go, we need three. So we're just going to go ahead and check all these spots. Um, you are correct. Uh, nobody has checked the Fair March bosses yet at all. Um, that was Mylon Z and another Sparkle. Um, both of those are certainly not required. If you have a Cecil that has a Crystal Sword or an Excal, or you have some kind of, you know, uh, 
you know, bow, because my lawn's easy and squiggly floating. Um, that can be kind of quick, um, but I think it's a very valid and justified decision that all of our runners kind of in lockstep on, like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and take that. I mean, do you, when you look at what's kind of left that, that we know we have at least attempt, we haven't seen tempted yet, I mean, there's it's Feymarsh or Moon, and Moon, you know, you have some, you have a lot more access to bosses, so the density of the Moon, or particularly at the Lunar Subterranean, uh, makes you know, dri- kind of drives the uh, routing decision, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think, I mean, I th- usually if you've done your, if you've essentially done your bosses on the moon at least face check them you'll have a clear idea of what what's left and you're kind and sometimes as a racer you're kind of hoping you know if you fight this boss and then you get the key item that unlocks uh the another key item i mean you know, as has been said before you know follow your follow your key, uh, objectives or key items well sometimes the 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 boss that could be gating the, the key item you need that Get in, 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 this, in this boss hunt, the, the boss you need to, com- to complete the seed. So sometimes it can work out like that. And hey, this is free, so might as well do it. <laughs> That's what Possum is thinking. Yep. Solaris is showing off one of my uh, uh, underappreciated grinds that we have available to us, and that is a warlock grind. Um, putting Tello down to make sure that the agility stays where it needs to be. I have to wonder, uh, going back to that Venus fight he had, Venus, I mean, like I know it's fast. I wonder if uh, Tell was at agility zero. Uh, that, that was that was just absolutely just brutal. Um, we'll have to ask him about that. But on uh, LST four on the fourth floor, um, uh, Sirens will go ahead and will summon Warlocks. And if you wait long enough, Warlocks will in fact go ahead and punch. But if you have mute bells or if you have a um, uh, if you have a white mage ca- uh, caster that can cast mute. As I have learned, thanks to both Pankras and Rybon, if you happen to go ahead and be at battle speed 3, and you're at RA1, you can go ahead and get this item off before they cast any spells. And it's essentially the same as an hourglass. Uh, so you can life glitch. Uh, without 10 key items, this is probably going to be around somewhere in the vicinity between 90 and 95,000 XP a pop, uh, which is quite a bit. And they're well equipped for it. They don't need weak. Uh, that mute knife is going to go uh, 865. Uh, that mute knife is going to go ahead and do some work. Possum showing us that it was a bit of a zonk, uh, but it was free uh, for his water hack fight. And is finding the opposite of free in Ogopogo at the Ruin Room. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Warlocks only punch when alone. So, you know, so it's always, it's basically magic all the time until, <laughs> until they're the, just by itself. So it's, Pretty free for the most part, and can you can take advantage of the battle script pretty early. But, uh, when you see Ogo at which is which is effectively a high HP spot, uh, but the but the the, the the lunar spot, uh, yeah, that's not, yeah, that's a nope. Not and uh, hoping for alt gauntlet. It, no, it's Baron Guards. This is super free, so this is gonna be free XP. This should be decent enough to uh, maybe get a uh, palab not. Um, uh, Probably where it needs to be. It's not uh, until taking his usual nap. Uh, but uh oh, for just a moment there, Pal was uh, only five more HP, only five HP away from uh, taking a nap. So that that's pretty fortunate. Yep. Uh, so uh, Tella casting weak. We might be trying to see a double life glitch here. So by casting ice two, there's going to be a little bit of a delay. Oh no, going with virus. Uh, never mind then. Uh, I thought maybe we're going for a double there. We might see, um, Hella get put back down here real quick, um, after, uh, casting weak one more time. Um, but again, this goes back to that base and free. So, uh, even without 10 key items, this is still a, really a solid amount of, um, XP here. Uh, if we were on 10 key items, this would be around probably 300,000, so I think we'll be looking at, like, 125, 150 in that vicinity. Oh, 91. I should learn how to count. Um, Tell us staying up for that, uh, for those levels. I guess with the curse ring, it doesn't matter all that much. And let's see what Possum gets for his trouble. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. For person not in seed, that is, that's that's enjoyable. But, but the XP Possum needs not some, but you know sometimes 
information that it's not a key item is better but then like having to just like skip it like say if you if you wipe you just skip you fade it and uh kind of get <laughs> becomes a uh, kind of a uh, questionable like sometimes the the thing you the, the thing you uh kind of smash your head against is the thing you actually need to do and we don't you don't know it till <laughs> you find out what's at what at the end of the end of the fight so it's can be it can be difficult with um Oh, oh wait, hey, we have a cane, so st still useful. Um, I guess in well, uh, no, nope, that's a that's a complete fade. I was like, uh, are we doing that? No. But yeah, going to wyv uh, wyvern so wyvern spot with the crystal sword altar it makes a lot of sense. Um, and probably, and I, I assume this. I mean, you have you kind of have to effectively do a full clear. May, may have to actually come back and do the ogo after this. But like, you know, this not the worst thing you want. If you know, some boss is too tough, you can always fight a, a, a different boss, which might be more favorable. And then, with the levels, you know, with XP gained, you might actually get the, the the levels to take on the boss that you actually need to fight. Uh, yeah. Um, getting a little. Uh, we haven't found a single boss up here on the moon, uh, and that little lovely piece of vanilla uh, certainly applies. Um, possibly thought about for a second. So what that means is that um, our runners are, as possums, going down to Wyvern Standard Time, Battle Speed 6, to go ahead and, uh, and I guess he's considering this to go ahead uh, and be a, well, there's probably a couple of things he might be thinking. Number one, uh, thinking that this is a quote-unquote free check. Um, uh, or number two, um, I just checked the entire LST and as well as Cape Bahama, and I didn't find a single boss that I need. And even if I have two bosses that are up on the giant, that means I'm still going back to these one-offs back on the moon. So this might be a bit of hedging bets, which he doesn't normally do, um, but maybe looking to um, have a quote-unquote free boss that won't take that long. Um, good amount of XP at this spot, again, even without 10 key items, but also maybe hoping to spring a tower, a, a uh, earth crystal, or even something you know less desirable like a Luki key or a twin harp. Just something to give an extra boss check in hopes that we never have to go ahead and come back to them. Yeah, I feel like there's probably one key item you uh, on the moon that might be worth picking up, like just so that you can get to the bosses from the bosses or from a like boss within a boss chain that you might need to do. Like having so few key items, I think we're only like, at best half of the key items possible, or it's not still not enough point where uh you know you feel safe that not, this this you know it's starting to feel like hey i actually have to clear the whole moon and what i find here will get me the chain to get to get to where i need to go so it, um and i would um it, it was interesting that uh what wasn't tempted to say to uh for getting right or cast a summon uh may, maybe keep kane down and Try to get a another mega, a force mega new, and hey, the key item we don't need. This seed is hilarious. This seed has got jokes on jokes on jokes on jokes on jokes on jokes on jokes. The three bosses that he took, we had two zonks and an obligatory. Oh, good, we can get underground now. So, I think we're seeing. Uh, Possum not exiting, which means he's saying, all right, game, I see you. The giant isn't going to be enough, as Solaris victoriously says, finally, a spot where I can go ahead and use my spoon, since I couldn't use it earlier. And uh, probably heading down to that Ogopogo spot, because the ribbon room is uh, two more opportunities. I think uh, if I'm him, I want a little bit of insurance that I never have to come back down here again. Um, doing uh, King, uh, these dragons without an hourglass can be less than ideal. Um, just seeing the hourglass now, uh, Riddy gets his other cast off, it's irrelevant. Um, but this fight can be just awful. Both stops get off. I don't believe that there'll be another attack queued up. So, um, let's see, for possum, we have one, two, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's ten key items at least. So we're gonna see 110, uh, 180,000 uh, XP from here. 
So that's not nothing, but still, that is not the key item that uh, that we were looking for here at all. Yeah, I think that and there's the evil wall that was faded earlier uh, at the uh, the pale dim spot. That so that might be a I might have to come back to that. Maybe that actually gets faded. We, well, no, I mean this. I mean, right now, it's, if if the moon is haunted, uh, it will be glorious entertainment. But on the other hand, um, it will it will uh, kind of inform the fact. Hey, maybe the maybe the uh, the Fey March bosses that were faded earlier, uh, they might actually have something you need. That's which is uh, well, well. We'll have to we'll have to see what that comes down to. But it's uh, it's getting spicy, and I love it. Speaking of spicy, Rybon, who has been uh, a couple of minutes behind as Harump feels all of our pain with that ridiculous samurai bow. Um, Rybon, the first of our runners to just take the Ogo. Um, another thing that's kind of become canon, as Ogo can be so rude, is that Ogo is weak to Berserk. Um, Rybon, as you can see in, in his inventory, bought a ton, an absolute ton of Bacchus wine. So we have three Zerked up... Um, characters here. Uh, as uh, most of you probably know, if you cast spells directly against Ogo, um, the reaction, more commonly than not, uh, will result in a blaze that takes out 25% of your health. The exception to that is casting a lightning spell, which will result in a weak cast. Um, Rybon um, didn't spend the time going back and forth. Rybon took this fight right away. Uh, and Rybon is our first person to get through Ogo. So let's see what kind of value we have at the Ribbon Room. And does this mean he'll be more like more than likely to go ahead and fade Wyvern if, if and when he gets up there? The pan. I, th I think the I think the the seed definitely has jokes. Uh, the pan um, gates effectively two key items. Uh, what um, K, K main when you well K summon when you when you uh, bonk Yang on the head and K, K main when uh, when you do Sheila too. So uh, and I'm not even and I don't remember if Rivon did Sheila one. So it, that's so that's also another key item check. Um, uh, if not completed, well, that's going to be on the table. If, so there's um, it might uh, it, it it's hard. This I mean from from our position the. Robin only found that that did particular that particular fight, but that right now for Possum, like Possum know, knows pretty much where everything else else is on the moon outside of uh, the evil wall spot. Uh, that pen could actually unlock the rest of the seed, so right, potentially, and so and with the, with the two or three potentially three key items gated by that pen, there you're um, that. There is, there is, uh, right now, you know, for, for Possum, maybe he's worth fading, all route fading Evil Wall and just doing Pan. So that's something to, to see going forward. Right, Rybon won't be, be able to see that, but Possum will. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, Solaris is going Panless and is going to give us our first look at the giant. Um, Rybon has a very angry Sid. People not named Elven Sorrow tend to go ahead and not necessarily appreciate Sid for all that he has. But you're about to see an arty arty Sid go to town on these uh, these gold dragons um, with those quad nines right there. Uh, his Deuce Gauntlet Black Belt. Uh, that Sid is going to do some serious work. You don't necessarily think of him being a real contributor in terms of DPS, but he is absolutely um, uh, doing some serious work here. Uh, Solaris... Possibly setting up a quick D machine grind because I don't know if he reset or not, but he might be using everyone's favorite chart to go ahead and kind of figure out where he's at. Uh, nope, put the encounters off. Uh, that's another. I, I I could talk to Solaris for hours, wondering what he's. Oh, um, he put the encounters off because his uh, D machine fight is going to be up in this room. So this is uh, Solaris's grind. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He has ten key items as well. Uh, so we may be seeing both Palm and Rydia getting up to Nuke. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hope that he has the um, uh, uh, 
uh, either enough ether twos or ether ones to go ahead and um, uh, uh, get Tella through with weak. Um, but again, here's how good these runners are. Uh, Solaris is able to not only go ahead and um, start the D-Machine grind, but he's able to go ahead and concurrently kill the search, uh, the um, the little laser dudes at the front, they have an official name, but also start the D-Machine grind at the same time. Um, that's just incredibly skilled. Um, you, you'd love to see everything about it. Um, I wonder if his Sid is cursed? And that makes me a little nervous about the weeks going ahead and going through. Uh, Beamers, thank you, Zeno. Um, but he seems to be uh, just kind of cruising along here. Um, anyone that's ever done this grind knows that when agility is a little out of whack, which it's not because everyone's already won here, um, this can be awful. This can be really, 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 really tricky. Um, and he's making it look very, very, very easy. So um, this will be Solaris's grind. Um, he's not going to have to do what Possum's doing right now, which is uh, any kind of eggs whatsoever. Um, we're also, he'll also more than likely be the first to show us our two bosses that we have up here. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Possum's also probably going to be the first to show us where the pan is leading. So, um, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, gambles aren't really paying off, and um, we could have a necessary gating key item behind somewhere that we haven't seen yet. This is a really trolly, difficult seed. I mean, it could be... I mean, one of the bosses could be at CPU. I mean, that's a fun spot. Asuka or... is uh, doing our job for us. Apparently at the element spot we have Mom Bomb, so that's a required boss right away. Uh, um, oh, Mom Bomb. So yeah, that's a, that's a lot of HP to absorb at that spot and that does and that makes mom bomb a little more angry punching not not the worst uh, i think the 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 spot that's the part that's most difficult is that the, the if you don't uh, essentially nuke that boss down and i think and solaris probably is going to grind to nuke uh, if you don't nuke the boss down then the bombs uh will not probably won't even be might not uh might be taken down by a decent quake. Um, like it might have to be like a full-blown meteor. And I'm not even sure how much. I, I don't even know what the, H, the HP distribution, but it's uh, it's one of those. It's high enough that quake. But even if you uh, boost quake it, bluff quake it all the way, not not quite enough. It requires like a probably like a full-blown quad nine meteor, and that might and that might be enough. So there, this is not this is not strangely not. Not the ideal spot, Mom. Bomb having all that HP in this pool. Uh, agreed. Uh, so Mom Bomb at the later spots uh, normally isn't that bad. Uh, the script is a little complicated. Uh, Ten thousand HP tends to get added on to it, um, and along the way, an exploding uh, script starts to get triggered. But if you kill it within seventy percent of its added on HP, it's a whole thing. Um, so, generally speaking, when you find Mom Bomb at these later spots, usually the parties are strong enough that they can go ahead and kill it before it explodes. Um, without, and, we're, and here we're seeing Rybon just going for it, uh, hoping that the bosses themselves, uh, as Rybon also, I believe, has 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, also has 10 key items. Um, the XP is going to be split a little bit, but I think he's hoping that the bosses themselves will go ahead and be the grind. Uh, as Solaris finishes out his Demon Machine grind. So, um, he's sitting on Palm's turn. I don't know if he's doing that, uh, getting ready for a quake. Uh, I don't believe he's bluffed up, but I think he's hoping that uh, these RA1 Zerkers are going to go ahead and be able to kill Mom Bomb ahead of time. So, um, Rybon being a little more uh, aggressive. <laughs> is the only person to show us that that is the Earth Crystal behind Cave Bahamut. He is the only one of our restreamed runners that has gone ahead and done that. So if we have a, oh, I don't know, double required Earth Crystal, which is not the craziest thing uh, with the boss, because we haven't seen that many boss spots left, that could be uh, absolutely huge. Um, but Rybon's tactic has worked. Um, I don't believe that his Palom has nuke yet, but he is the first one to get through a mom bomb, and he'll be the first one to go ahead and show us who's at the uh, CPU spot. 
Yeah, I think Harumph uh, finding um, her, the Arscrats was, was a plague at that spot, at, which uh, is kind of nice. It's actually kind of nice. I mean, you slow, an uh, slow anchor and Tello, although I think even with a Cursed Ring, you might. Uh, there, the, there's certain levels I don't remember where, but there's like this void where uh, Tello has, would have, if when have equipped with a Cursed Ring, has z would have zero agility, and that uh, it can be dangerous because. I think that makes the monsters go faster, and that's not not where you want to be. So it's like it's it's an interesting void that uh, Tella, uh, when when still alive, uh, can be uh, kind of like quirky. So sometimes you want to try to get the grind away and like just try to get the uh, try to get uh, Tella above that the specific level. I don't know where it is. Like, but when it's around like around the 700, 800 AP mark. Uh, it doesn't gain that much HP, so it's not hard to keep track. But it's it's you want to try to avoid uh, being at agility uh, with his agility at zero, being the anchor. That just uh, it it get become, start the agility anchoring becomes haywire, and you don't want you don't want that surprise happening. So we have a lot happening right. Now. Elements was Leviathan. Leviathan's not required. Leviathan's a bust. Awesome's going to show us in two seconds, because we know this is a full moon for Sheila 1, if this is another boss check that we get from the pan check. It's not. It's a coffin. That's terrible. So now we're on to our one-offs, because we have found Mom Bomb, Elements, DKC, Golbez, and Bygan. That's five. We need two more bosses. We haven't found Antlion, Ruby, or the Gauntlet. We need the three of them. Barumph is the only one that has the Earth Crystal. But Possum, smart enough to know that you can still go ahead and get to Zot 1. So Possum is going to Zot 1. You're now going to see Possum start to do his one-offs. Once he's done with um, with uh, Zot 1, you'll probably see him go ahead and check... Um, I don't even know. He's done... Oh, he'll probably go down to the Fey March afterwards and hope to find some kind of chain and key item. Um, it's possible that the Fame March will have Twin Harp or Package or Luka Key. Um, but this is basically a one-off boss check. And then Possum's probably heading down to the Fame March, hoping to find something like Earth Crystal, which again, Harumph is the only one that has it. This is absolutely wild right now. I find this one-off strange in a way like what like what's on the moon left for possum is uh is the the plague with the, for the earth crystal and whatever is at evil wall the 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 at the pale dim spot so there's essentially two checks and we have found gauntlet and uh well this is a weak gauntlet but it's an objective and this is the, this is the kind of uh one-off payoff that uh <laughs> possum is definitely taking full advantage of and, and another thing to these runners, right? So Zot 1 has a very low agility. Normally, you want a very fast anchor. But Possum went ahead and put a cursed Tella in the center slot, which would be a slow anchor. And you may think, well, why would he go ahead and do that? Well, he did it because by putting Palum up at the top spot, Palum is the only one of these runners outside of Rydia, but Palum's the better one, that has AoE. So he's guaranteeing that Palum goes first, which means you see how quickly he is absolutely shredding through these bosses. So, uh, Possum is now... Uh, I don't think Possum has done the moon yet. Um, I, I think he's faded that for now, for whatever reason. Um, so, I'd be curious to see if he goes up to the moon, or if he um, if he ends up going down to the Fey March. Harumph is going and going to find his gauntlet, um, and he's also going to go ahead and show us uh, Zot 2. If Zot 2 has Antlion or it has Ruby, then doing Cave Bahamut is hard required, and our other three runners are in for a bit of a rough time. I think it's kind of hilarious that every, every runner has convert, on Restream is, has converged in Tower of Zot. <laughs> Uh, Harumph with the obvious advantage with the Earth Crystal, so we can see what's behind, what's on uh, the Val spot. Just everyone's like, uh, "Hey, what, what's what's at Zot One?" Oh, it's I, 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 it's 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 interesting decision making where Zot is the is the hey, it's, why why not here? So it 
very it's a very interesting decision and uh could uh i think although it feels like uh what well, we know i mean obviously this is required but it's like it's from a rotting perspective it's not not the most efficient though that's a, a, that's when you have the earth crystal it's super efficient it's when you don't it does not it doesn't it look does not look like the best choice with it hey I, however you get to uh killing uh seven out of the eight bosses i mean ha, for what we uh, what we know val could the val spot could have nothing so it's just as well i mean again it, it comes down to you know when you start face checking bosses and how many things you have access to Zot one is always on the table. Um, if any of you have uh, that are, are listening and have played Seeds, where you haven't been able to find Magma Key and you haven't been able to find the hook, and uh, you can't figure out where on Earth it is, and then you realize that you haven't found Demis yet because there's no free item and Demis is sitting in Zot one, um, it happens. Uh, this counts as access to a boss. I think the key for this flag set is figuring out when to go ahead and fade. Um, seeds like this, trolly, rude, ridiculous, glorious for us watching. Like, commentating on this is great. You know why this is great? Because I'm not running it. That's why this is great. I just get to go ahead and watch good people do this and, and, and say words about it. Um, but I think it's heads up. Um, awkward a little bit, sure, but so am I. And uh, I think it's just, it's a delicious check uh, that so many of our runners have figured out that they can go ahead and do. Um, but I am I am at the edge of my seat to see Barumph Edzot 2, which we're going to see in just a moment. Because if it is Ruby, or if it is uh, Antlion, oh baby, it's, uh, uh, I think Harumph, who's been, uh, he had that wipe over um, at, the, at the Ruby spot with Elements, I think Harumph might jump into the lead just because of the fact that he has the knowledge. I th I, th I think we've missed something, but Rybon actually has the crystal. Rybon's actually in go mode. I don't. We I've, I've, I might have missed uh, where Ruby or uh, th whatever uh, the other I, boss was I left. Am, I am so sorry. Antline yeah. was in for bull. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, I apologize. Yeah. So. Um... We're about to go ahead and see a bit of a Z fight here. Uh, we had. Do, do you want to go ahead and explain why uh, Zeromus is not randomized? Uh, Z is the, the biggest boss baddie in all of Final Fantasy IV. I mean, who, 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 who wants to deal with moving that? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Z. Uh, Z is difficult to move. Uh, metal, uh, lots of lots of um, magic that puts puts Z, uh, Z together. But uh, you know, the thing that we love doing Z is uh, let Z do cosplay. Uh, Z transforms after you, after the crystals being used. But you know, the question everyone is asking is, uh, whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And of course, all the ancillary questions of does it have a butt? Is butt cute? Hat hat hat. Spear spear spear. Um, but uh, Zot Two uh, having Ruby is uh, a little a uh, little special, and I do believe uh, if Antline was in <laughs> if Antline was in Fabul, that means Harumph is now in Go mode. And oh my goodness! Uh, P.S. Can we enjoy the fact that we're going to have dueling Z fights between Solaris and Rybon? Harumph is going to be all of maybe seventy-five seconds behind that, and Possum just got his crystal. Um, while uh, all our runners are getting set up for their Z fights, please give them a follow if you don't already. Uh, Harumph, uh, famous within the community of not having uh, a love of, of harp, and of course we have a seed where there is no twin harp. Did he just get the twin harp? He just got the twin harp, of course he did. Um, uh, Possum Morpheus are Adam and Cup champion. Solaris, Rybon, uh, Rybon the runner-up. Um, as we're looking at, I don't even know, I got nothing. I'm sure somebody in chat will know what that is. It's cool, but I have no idea what that thing is. Um, please give these runners a chat, uh, a follow. Uh, they are nothing short of extraordinary. Yeah, uh, I think the word is orb. That's uh, that's about all I know, and it's that's fine. Uh, oh, sounds like Ozma from Final Fantasy IX. Interesting. So basically, CPU version five or something, right? Because we because we all love round topics. <laughs> 
that have have a lot of color to them. It's very interesting. Yeah, um, I actually uh, I stopped at eight personally, uh, but there it is. Uh, so Z fights are never guaranteed. Uh, that's for sure. Um, if uh, both Solaris and uh, Solaris has uh, both um, Rydia and uh, Palom at uh, up to Nuke. So we're going to probably see Reflect Strats up to them, which means he only needs to do either 61 or 63,000 damage, whereas Rybon is going full-blown uh, Hybrid Strats, so it might take him a little bit longer. So it's possible that Solaris' fight is going to be a little bit faster, uh, but we'll go ahead and see. Um, uh, we have uh, Possum entering his fight and Harumph getting into his... I don't. I can't remember the last time that we had the community race of a of a, a run this convoluted that had um, that we had four concurrent Z fights all happening at the same time. Especially when you consider all the diversions that we had at the beginning. This is uh, this is amazing. I love everything about this. We were talking uh, before the stream about how how good all of these runners are, and and here we are just. Um, you know, enjoying the labors of, of their hard work. Yeah, um, a lot of this has to do with some of the, uh, a bit, kind of the divergence allowed by only needing to complete seven out of eight bosses. So basically, uh, if you miss a boss, you're not, uh, not going to be punished. So like in the, so in the case of not having an earth crystal, like, uh, you know, possum, right? Rybon Solaris did not have to fight the ruby behind that. But the ruby was required, so Haram was the beneficiary. So, kind of allows for interesting divergions in timing for all of it. It's uh, interesting. I think the uh, when, when you have uh, hybrid strats, though, uh, especially when you have like say double new casters, uh, ha having a hybrid strat where and, and, and despite Tella being the anchor, you um. You're, you have a kind of an interesting window where if both uh, if both nukes go off on the reflected uh, from the reflect reflected nukes, um, then you have a pretty good chance of try, of of kind of killing Z pretty quickly. But you know, requires a lot of things to go right and the timing to happen. So it, it's kind of interesting when you have when you have that option on the table. Yep, and uh, we have uh, Solaris showing us the efficiency of reflect strats. Uh, finishing uh, a very trolly, very difficult seed uh, at an hour and 34 flat. He is our first place uh, finisher uh, on Restream, but third overall. Earlier we had Flurry finishing at uh, 1 hour 25 minutes, and we had Decker Smash at 1 hour and 29 minutes. Um, I do believe that Slaris will uh, be going ahead and joining us for an interview in just a little while. Meanwhile, Rybon also, uh, that appears to be a shake and a crash for him. Uh, so GG's to Rybon and Slaris, and that up in my ear means that we are joined by our champion of Restream in third place overall, Slaris. How you doing, my friend, after that nice, easy cakewalk of a seed? Asuka, where are the bosses? <laughs> Where are the bosses? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, buddy. All right. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I got to do Cosby a couple weeks ago, and so I feel like we're best friends. I don't know if that's your opinion. Uh -huh. but, yeah, yeah, but regardless. Yeah, um, yeah, I feel close. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Go ahead. So, uh, first uh, first foremost, uh, your overall thoughts of that delightful scene? Um, you know what? The early game felt... It's interesting. It felt bad and good at the same time. It always feels bad to spend time up front not doing chucks when you have a vanilla geared edge, but um, I just, with the hook immediately, I just wanted to try the play of like, well, the shock of Cave Eblin is extremely powerful compared to T-Pro, because T-Pro loot is just crap. Um, so I'm just going to grab all my characters, understand who I have, and run to that thing immediately and see what power I can pick up. And it turned out to be Rydia. <laughs> turned right. out to be Rydia with Leviathan. Uh, and then that felt really, really, really good. Um, and I felt honestly pretty okay until the point where I was like, well, okay, now I have eight key items. I guess I'll try for ten key items, and then that's just kind of where everything unraveled. Yeah, um, the... I... I... I have to. I have to go to that deepest. I have to go to that deepest. Oh, it was fun, wasn't it? It, it was. It was so fun because uh, I felt like I could hear 
your thoughts. Uh, number one, going going through that because it was it was clearly a bit of a struggle. But but not only um, uh, getting the uh, samurai bow for for the for all of your hard work, which had to yep. feel great. Good value. But, yep. But but getting the spoon just after the demon was there was there a yell were there some some words that were not necessarily stream appropriate that were uttered uh at that lovely little re uh, revelation honestly okay so it, when you see demist you have darkness you're on boss hunt like the same the correct thing to do the like the thing that probably would have saved me a lot of time because I made this a gamble, it would have been to reset, because unless Demist gave Earth Crystal or Twin Harp or Package or Luca, which I guess is like not the most unreasonable thing, um, you kinda don't need it. And it turned out like the seed you didn't need it. You just needed to uh, you know, find the, <laughs> the last hidden bosses of the seed. Uh so as I get there and I start, I'm like, I shouldn't do this. And I'm like, well, but I kinda want to. I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, I didn't expect uh, queuing up Leviathan to mean that Demist would one by one single out every person who was going to take an action and then just sort of go back to Mist. That was cute. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I learned how that fight goes and how slow I knew it would be. So like, yeah, uh, didn't pay out, but it was fun. So yeah, no, no strong words that oh, I, I did okay. it to myself. Okay. Uh, uh, Death, like, I could talk to him all night, so I should really give you some time here, bud. Uh, <laughs> what was... Uh, what was the, um, the decision to just decide, hey, uh... I would want to do... I want to do my grind on, uh, in the Giant. Uh, I, think, I think you were the only one on Restream that dis decided to, to do the grind on Giant. I mean, also besides, you ch I think you, fa you face-checked the, uh, element spot for for bomb, the required bomb bomb yeah um well it's it was weird because i had the sirens in hand and i was like well you either took a d machine pretty much immediately this seed because i don't think it was that hard to find darkness or i mean you didn't basically it felt binary until i was in a moment where i was like well i really just need to get to the giant because I have so little left, and if I have any hope of, of anything without having to, like, clear moon bosses without any experience, practically it felt like. Um, I just ran to the giant was like, how many? Okay, I have to kill 90 machines? Perfect. That's actually really easy. So that, that's why I chose to do it. I saw the mom bomb, and I was like, I think it's probably faster if I just take this grind now. Makes total sense to me. Um, was it uh, difficult to figure out when you wanted to go ahead and start face-checking versus not? Uh, with the way because the the key item distribution was just it was it was trolly it, it uh, honestly it was a little uh it was, it was a little you know no earth crystal and you know four bosses that you can't get to do you start face checking do you not um did that impact did it give you kind of any second guessing about when you wanted to start face checking versus not yeah, I mean, it sure felt bad to uh, get a magma key for my trouble on the moon and then think like, well, I guess I'm just gonna go look for bosses. Um, like, <laughs> if like if that gauntlet wasn't at Zot One, then that meant we were we were gonna have to go find a key item. So I mean, it certainly felt bad fading the spots I did. I just I decided to lean into one thing and go for it. Um, like. You get to a point with these seeds where you have two or three bosses left, and depending on the key items that you've got, it's like sometimes it's really obvious that you just face check and go, and then that spot, like it's kind of defensible to just get key items. It's like an earth crystal, twin harp, or whatever, but yeah. Regardless, like you just gotta, you, you have to make a decision and go, and that's what I did. Yeah, so as it turns out, um, the, uh, the sparkle at Cave Bahamut was plague. Which had Earth Crystal, which ah. had which had uh, as you know Gauntlet, but it also had Ruby in the second spot. Ah, okay, all right, yeah. I mean, so be it. Right. So, uh, is that what, is that like what everyone else did, or did it, uh... it is not? Uh, Harumph uh, was a little behind, uh, had a little difficulty uh, getting through the Elements fight, um, and then saved it quite a bit of time because he uh, hit that and then he chased it, and it uh, it paid off in a big way for him. 
uh, the everyone, uh, yourself, Rybon, and Possum, and I can't of course speak for the people that weren't on restream. Yeah, but they did what you they did what you did. Uh, did a, a handful of, of moon checks to the giant, um, and then did that one. Yeah, these seats are so fascinating. Uh, well, look, I'll, I'll head on out of here. I know some folks are looking to come in for an interview, but these seats are fascinating because bosses don't care about key item logic, and I think you're going to see really interesting divergence and divergent paths throughout this tournament. So it's pretty neat to hear. You know, you could have just found an Earth Crystal instead. Uh, but anyways, thanks so much. Thanks for doing the talking, the restreaming, the tracking, all of you. It's super appreciated. Well, Show wouldn't happen it. without y'all. Thank you for uh, running. I'll dip, dip on out of here, and uh, yeah, until next time. Bye. Take care. Thank you, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, while we have been, uh, so we, we know that Solaris finished third. Um, in fourth place, we had uh, Klopfer finishing in fourth, uh, Rybon finishing in fifth. And uh, speaking of sixth place, we have uh, our second uh, finisher on Restream, sixth place overall, our Adam and Cup champion, and yours, Possum Morpheus. GG's, my friend. Uh, yeah, GG's. Uh, well done to everybody who. Well, made the more correct plays for that seed than I did. <laughs> um, it was uh, definitely some seeds are linear, some seeds are not, and I think it's you know outside of the fact that there wasn't really a lot of uh, anything in the overall with the sphere zero checks. Uh, I wouldn't call this a linear C once you got underground. I mean, it, it to me felt very. Um... I guess very direct, actually, in what I was going to do. Uh, having the tower key as soon as I got underground, you know, free fight at the top, go there, take care of that, do the tower room, head to Dwarf, head to Fey March, see if there's a freebie in the Fey March, which um, Mylon Z potentially is a freebie, um, but didn't want to spend the time down there at that time. I decided at that point to Sheila 1, you know, try to find a 10th key item, grind up, and then go to the moon. 10th key item never came unless it was in Fey March, and that's a huge gamble uh, to go back down to Fey March. So, went up to the moon, tried to find things that were free, didn't want to take a 50-50 on Plague and Wyvern at Value Cave, turned out that it was Plague. Uh, and from spoilers, uh, turned out that that was the answer. <laughs> was just go do Cave Bahamut, go do the Earth Crystal and win the game. But, you know, here we are having cleared the full bottom of the moon uh, later. So I thought it was pretty, pretty linear, but that's just me. <laughs> I mean, you know, so you, you and I, uh, you know, outside of, of here have had a lot of discussions. It's something I talked about a lot on stream tonight about what, you know, when you just start face checking or not. Um, not having access to four bosses uh, to me, it just, it feels a little rude. You know what I mean? So, like, once you're on the moon, like, what do you take? What don't you? Um, can you talk about your decisions on, uh, like, going back for that Ogo versus not, and kind of what was your mindset on what bosses you were going to take once you got onto the moon? Yeah, so there's, uh, you've heard me say it before, it's face and free. So I will face check and I will take my freebies. Um, Water Hag gave an Artie Bow. Unfortunate. Baron Guards gave a defense sword. Unfortunate, but those are my freebies. Um, skipped over that 50-50 of Plague and Wyvern because didn't want to deal with Wyvern there with 37,000 health and no levels and, you know, just like Quake and a, a, a Zerker, basically. Uh, Evil Wall was a non-starter in Murasame. Uh, Ogo was not going to happen until levels and just wanted to find a 10th key item, do one set of gold dragons and go back and Zerk. Uh, Wyvern provided the 10th key item. It's technically free in its vanilla spot. So it was one of those, okay, quick reset, take the fight, get the 10th key item, grind up a little, go do Ogo, maybe hit, you know, Twin Harp or Luca or even the package or, or you know, Zot. Any of those would have been great and just came up with bupkins. Uh, that pan might be the saddest pan I've ever seen in my darn free enterprise life with a Stardust J item and a coffin. Uh, I didn't even have a porum to use the coffin on, so I had to reset out of it. Oh, man. Was it sadder than the Sam uh, Samurai Bow from uh, Demist? I mean, I still got the pink tail from that, so that was fine. That's fair. I was Which hoping one? to hit tanky items off of that, that's why I took it. Um, 
would have liked to have that spoon back, but you know, these are the choices we make and we got to live with. For sure. Uh, Deathlike, uh, what you got for him? Uh, I think I, honestly, the only question I have is, um, so I think I think you were uh, kind of divergent early on compared to the other runners, where you had basically the two-man group with Edge and mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was Kane early on, and uh, I'm sure and Edge is a very popular, uh, you know, kind of early, uh, kind of kind of early powerhouse early on, uh, can pretty much do anything, and for this flag set. Um, great for if if this is you know kind of a goal early goal buzz in your path um uh, would you do this with any other character and when would you in like maybe a foo and was and do you think um how how valuable do you think uh an early edge is so i i think with edge and foo you can get away with two man clears of the overworld whoever that second person is um with edge i like to find a good weapon for him to go with his, you know, he comes with a black belt and a, a bandana. He has two short swords. I want to find something else to help him. Uh, Eblin seemed like a really good choice to go loot because you also have Kane. Uh, Kane loves Eblin Castle. Even on T-Pro, you find some tier four, tier five weapons for him. So the plan is take those two, especially with an edge start, and then just roll through everything you possibly can until you hit another character that is in your path, which in this case is Ordeals. So you do Fabul, you do Antline, you do Hobbs, you do Baronin. Any wasted actions parrying through other party members who aren't contributing are slowing you down. So with Edge, you just basically run amok through the entire overworld. I think I had like a 16 minute overworld clear um, before like doing Eblin and other things to get some catch up levels. But like that's actually a little slower because the Edge gear was not great. His second weapon was a meat knife that I had to buy which frankly that's a low roll like normally you hit something else so poison axe cane threw a headband on him gave him a karate key he helped uh didn't get the third character until his palamon ordeals and then went and gathered everyone and built out the party from there uh, i'm just a huge fan with foo and edge especially of doing exactly that uh just making it super efficient so you don't have to worry about parrying through the turns of like a base level porum and edward a sid who's only dealing like 100 damage you know, characters like that, or Yang even, who, if you're lucky, is hitting for tens of damage. I don't like adding those characters to the party. Totally different with Assassin, but that is, uh, that's how I approach the, the Edge and Fu seeds. Makes a lot of sense. All right, well, uh, GG's on a, uh, on a race uh, well run. Um, you know, we, we've, uh, when I was on with Solaris a couple weeks ago, we talked about people kind of discovering, kind of, you know, the meta necessarily but trying to you know th these flags are so different you know earned characters not on only free and and full-blown boss hunts i mean you help design them you know as well as anybody you just how different this is yeah and it's um it's very exciting to see uh you know how quickly people are adapting like yourself or solaris or ibon or any of these amazing runners that we have um and i think y'all gave us a really good insight into just how exciting red moon is going to be for us to watch uh and thank you for putting on show tonight yeah, my pleasure. I'm looking forward to both moons equally. I think they're both absolutely amazing, have different challenges to them. Uh, and I think, it, you know, all the runners in both moons are going to put on one heck of a show. Uh, really looking forward to this tournament. It's something way different than I think has ever been done before. And I think uh, I think that different is going to be good. It's going to present some unique challenges. So thank you, y'all, for having me. Thank you, uh, Brickety Brick and Deathlike for comms. Look forward to watching this one back. Thank you, Dubward and Ninja, for doing the tracking. And uh, thank you, Asuka, for uh, for being the best darned restreamer, uh, and and Pink Puff Friendo and Pink Puff Queen that uh, that Free Enterprise could have. So thank y'all, and everyone have a great night. You take care. Take care, bud. Did you just get Possum. All right, so that was Possum Morpheus, our uh, sixth place finisher, uh, and we are joined by Harumph, who uh, decided to go ahead and forfeit after a bit of a nasty uh, Z fight. Z fights can be a little bit rude, uh, totally respectable. Uh, he was there, we know he would have gotten there, but um, made a perfectly uh, legitimate decision. Uh, GG's Harumph, how you doing? Doing all right here. Uh, not the cleanest here, but eh. <laughs> Uh, no, not, not necessarily, but, uh, that, uh, uh, well, why don't you, uh, have a, I've been talking all night. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts on how that seed was in general? Uh, 
the scene was really straightforward here. I was out of practice here. I've, uh, I'm going into the tournament here in the um, into the Red Moon here because this is the flags that I enjoy more. Um, I prefer more uh, resource restrictive <laughs> flag sets um, compared to Blue Moon here. Um, yeah, like it, the scene was really straightforward here. Um, double required Zot was kind of cheeky. Uh, yeah, I just need to remember. I just you know maybe tweak the party a little bit here. Maybe try to find an Asura, <laughs> which. Yeah, I didn't bother to try to find one along the way here. Maybe a few more levels here would have gotten the trick done. Uh, maybe remembering how to uh, nerf a big bang. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, would, it would help as well. But uh, yeah, it was fairly straightforward here. I knew what to do at the in the end of it here. But yeah, I said a little bit of this, you know. Uh, um, yeah, one wipe here. I already wiped. I already had like a fun wipe here going down the hook route earlier here, which. Uh, yeah, I wasn't too pleased with my play there either. I was like, yeah, uh, I know what to do here. In the end here, it's just, no, do I want to go, you know, do I want to spend the amount of time doing it here? No, I'll just uh, take the lesson from the seat here and move on to the next one. That's, honestly, that, and, and you know, because, and just because, you know, with the uh, a wipe at Z, which anyone that's played has had at least a, a wipe at Z, it's a, it's a rite of passage. Um, it, it happened. It's, it's a very, very, very tricky fight. And uh, I mean, I had one earlier uh, this morning. I mean, it, it just, it, what are you going to do? It happens. Um, and with a, you know, it, to, you know, using your words, it is an extremely restrictive flag set. Seven characters, none of whom were white mage, like you're pointing out tonight. So, sure, for Riddy would have been good. Um, you know, Deathlike had pointed out that there's no back row glitch. Um, you know, you started with Edge, which means that you're not going to get another one. And there's no Cecil, there's no Fu. Um, to be able to go ahead and do all of those things, uh, all the while not having uh, and still, you know, holding your own, um, and then making maybe a, a a less odds play in going to Cave Bahamut, getting Earth Crystal, following it, and then propelling yourself really right into the thick of it. I um, mean, it just shows uh, a real resiliency and a real uh, high game IQ of how to go ahead and get yourself right back in it. Um, so, you know, I understand that for your standards, maybe it wasn't quite what you wanted it to be, but it really was a very good run. It also provided some options as well here, like with, with the teller here um, and two black makers here, maybe reflect would have been the uh, strats layer would have been the way to go here. Uh, normal, typically, if you have a hook right away here, you may not be in <laughs> uh, knowing that's where you may not be incentivized to do football. I did football here looking for a darkness crystal. <laughs> Seriously, if I find that early darkness crystal here, I'm just going to slingshot. I'm just going to, you know, do ordeals here, and I'm just going to slingshot the black mage, and that's going to be the party. Sure. Yeah, we saw both. Uh, we saw uh, two of our runner, uh, Solaris did reflect. Um, I don't remember what Possum did, and uh, Rybon did hybrid. So, um, you know, uh, both were clearly very, very valid, and they finished within like a minute of each other. So both were totally valid options. I like it. There's more than one way to do this here. So, yeah, I like I might look back here at the seat afterwards here, but I'm not over committing myself here. I don't want to get into that burnout phase, um, which a lot, which you know, runners still can get into here. So, um, it's not stressing over or you no know, stressing too much here on what this seat was here. Just figure out here what I can you take away from this here and uh, um, take those lessons into the next one. Death, like, do you have anything for him? I apologize, but uh, one, one question, one simple question. Sure. Did you like the reward from Zot Two? Uh, I was perfectly fine with it here because it means that you know, well, uh, the reward from Zot Two was the crystal, uh, so <laughs> that meant I had a sea fight. Yeah. That well, <laughs> the other, the other item, but the harp. Oh, <laughs> that here. Uh. Well, I had the crystal here, so it doesn't matter what I got had anymore here. It would have it would have been more impactful of that if the harp ended up being key item number ten, and I could do a grind, um, a little bit of a grind afterwards here. But I was already at ten here if I wanted to do a grind, so it was inconsequential at that point here. It was uh, taunting me a little bit, I guess. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's been noted the seed had plenty of jokes. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, all that you do in our community and for being restreamed tonight and for putting a putting out a show for us to watch. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. And of course, uh, none of this can, can be possible here without our uh, behind the scenes team here. Oscar putting all to uh, putting everything together here. Uh, e Ninja dub word with tracking and uh, job uh and stuff like on comms. GG's to you as well. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Thank you. GG's against Trom. All right, so that was Harumph, our fourth and final uh, restreamed uh, uh, participant tonight. Uh, while we were chatting, Plumeria Knight finishing seventh with an hour 47 and two seconds. Uh, uh, Scythe Marshal, uh, or Scythe, did that wrong. Uh, in eighth place at an hour 50.28 and Apricot in ninth with an hour uh, 52.59 uh, seconds. Um, as Harumph pointed out, we do have an amazing restream team. Um, we didn't really get a chance to do our little spiel because um, we're just having such a good time tonight. Uh, if you are new to the community and still hanging around, our Discord is incredible, filled with wonderful people. Um, if you were thinking about uh, trying the game or trying it out, or if you have questions, uh, everyone's incredibly nice. Uh, my tagline is that this is the nicest place on the internet, which might not be the highest bar there is to go ahead and set, but it's still true regardless. Uh, so please join the Discord. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Asuka for doing the restreaming, which is a ton of work. Uh, Dubword and Eninja doing our tracking tonight with four runners is not easy. And thank you so much to Deathlike, uh, who uh, did commentary with me. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, it, was a good, it was a lot of fun. And I think we're going to move... Uh, I think we're moving to, is to Martin, who is running some Red Moon flags. Uh, I, think they, I believe he's participating in that part of the tournament uh, there's blue uh those who are interested in the tournament uh it's, there is two set there are two flag sets blue moon and red moon please get them right um and uh i think and tomorrow's uh, restream is hero's journey uh on free and on the free enterprise channel at 3 p.m eastern yep so as always uh no spoilers in the chat please and thank you uh martin actually helped design the uh the moons uh, so you'll definitely see some uh, high level gameplay from him it's also very entertaining uh hero's journey is always fun three o'clock tomorrow um so we're gonna send you on over there uh you all have an absolute wonderful night and thank you for watching see you all next seed <laughs>